uh, let's put the shader on. So I'm going to go over to the outliner, find the object, uh, make sure I'm going to select all the objects, and I'm going to put that one shader on the whole thing. So once all the objects are selected, right click, I'm going to go down the menu and find assign new material. In here, I'm going to find the Arnold tab, go down the shader underneath Arnold. I'm going to use the IA standard. This is basically the standard shader that makes a lot of typical materials, uh, glass, metal, um, plastic. It, it pretty much is the Swiss Army Knife shader inside of Arnold. Click on that and that comes in and we'll go through those, not all the parameters but the ones you need the most. So what, the first one is diffuse and right now we're, it's color. So your texture is going to be run through this color splotch right here. So let's just go to the input for color, go to file, go to filter type, we're going to turn that off, image name, and we're just going to load that in. Now I have to go back up a few directories. Uh, and then jerry can and then inside the source images in my Maya project directory I'm going to find the SP export so this is where I told my textures uh, to go from painter and go in here and then you can see all the textures that I have made so the base color the Fresnel F0 map normal map roughness uh, specular so we're going to go to the base color so that's that one map that we generated uh, inside of Painter to make. And I'm just going to hit, click it, open it up, load it. It comes in and there it is. And just make sure it shows up in the sample so you can actually just, you know, help identify what that texture looks like. All right, that looks good. Now that's not going to actually show up in the viewport because our viewport is not displaying texture. So I'm going to come up to the top, click on the texture icon and that should load. And again, the, you know, our lighting is not going to be uh, perfect in our scene. It never really displays uh, well uh, using the Arnold nodes. I can try turning on lighting, it just turns black. So typically I, use, I leave lighting off in the viewport if I'm using Arnold. All right, so now that's turned on and got that loaded. Let's click on the jerry can again. And then I also want to rename the shader. So I clicked on the can, brought the shader up. So right here, I do want to rename this so it's easier to track what's happening. So I'm just going to come over here and rename it Jerry Can Shader. And now we've got a shader that's more appropriate to what we're working with. Now let's come down to specular and we're going to put in our specular map, our roughness map, and our Fresnel map. So we're going to go down to color, click the input box, and go to file, change filter type to off, and then image name, and then we're going to find right in there specular there it is open it and you know sometimes if this little color uh, splotch doesn't update if you just click on it and it should update if it ever does all right there you go and now let's go back to the shader let's go down to the roughness load that in change filter type to off image name and roughness there it is open it and then oh there it is see how it's didn't update with the proper map so it just gives us a default Maya shader icon just click on it and it should go through and update that and then let's go down to the bottom and where it says micro faceted distribution uh, this is the GGX. There is two different kind of algorithms to calculate this. The one that's the most common is the GG 
uh, X, and that's again, that's something that's used in game engines also, and it usually is a pretty good standard to use, and that's what Painter uses also. So we're going to come down to Fresnel, we're going to turn this on, and then Reflectance at Normal, and that's that F0 map that we made. We're going to go to the input box and bring that in. File off there, image name, and there it is. There's that F0 map, and there we go. And it looks like they brought that. They don't have to hit the sample. And one more map to bring in. We go all the way down to the bump mapping rollout. Click down, bump mapping, input box, file. And then in the bump node, here's some parameters that you need to change. Um, you want to make sure you go down to use as bump. Drop this menu down and you make sure you use tangent space normals. And then under bump value, is the there's already a texture already associated with it. So we're just going to go down the rabbit hole here, go to the input, and go to file type, off, and an image name. So it already puts in the file node for us once, we, and the bump node automatically when we click on it, which is nice. And then find the normal map, and then load that in. Takes a little bit of time. There it is. And I loaded it, and then I'll click on the color splotch there. A little sample. Boom. Perfect. Now we've loaded all our maps, and if we come up to the Maya Arnold renderer and go to the render preview, it will load all the textures. So what it's doing, it's converting the textures into its own proprietary format for Arnold. So if I bring up the... So right here is where you can see all the textures in the folder. And you can see right next to it, there's two files with roughly the same name. The other one, This one was the one you loaded, which was the color base. And then right next to it is the Arnold shader or texture format so it converts it into this .tx file to be used to bring this texture into Arnold quicker so it renders faster so that's the whole point you can see that it did that for every texture that we loaded in so it's really good that you pay attention that you do not delete these files if you delete these Arnold's gonna regenerate them and then it's gonna make your rendering go slower so it's really important that you don't delete these and you keep these along with your textures uh, for your Maya scene. All right, and then we can see everything is loaded into Arnold. We can kind of preview it. Uh, it's a little dark. So what I can do is go back to the sky dome light click on that bring the attribute editor and then exposure we could just kind of crank that up a little bit more maybe just a little too much maybe like point well maybe one and then we can just kind of move it around a little bit and you can see what it's doing loading it and right now it's decent but it's not great and what's happening is we're not really getting the specular uh, channel or the specular uh, properties to really start to show so there's a few more parameters that we need to go over to really dial this in so that's what I'm gonna do in the next video alright I'll see you in the next video